Hey guys, GreatGamer34 here. Um, here is a CPU that I built a while back, but I haven't really programmed anything on it. Uh, it's nothing fancy. It doesn't have a shifter or anything on it. Obviously, it can do left shift uh, just by doubling a number, but um, I'm going to make it run a basic counting program today. And how I made this program, it's a little cheap. Um, it just uses a data path. So it's literally saving and writing t or reading from the same register. And that's all it's doing. So I can make it count by ones, twos, by by whatever. So let's make it count by three sevens. Let's do sevens. So it's gonna go one 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 uh one 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 zero. It's gonna go one zero one zero one and so on and so forth on that dis display. So how this works is it doesn't really use the program counter on it. It's just gonna use one line of code, so I'm just gonna advance the program counter. And we could watch it's gonna it's gonna have and it's just gonna count up by sevens. Or yeah, by sevens. And the display is a little slow. Now this is running at about four or five ticks, I'm not really sure. But that's just the dat data path between things. So it's literally instead of using a clock, the CPU is its own clock now. Which makes it super efficient also very cheap just to make a counting program and when it gets a carry out it should branch to line zero or no it shouldn't branch it should just reset everything and it looks like it's just looping back and forth now because well it can't really do much more so I can just jump back to line zero we're not reading any registers out or we're not reading any ROM right now there's no ROM being read and we could have it count by twos so there's a number two being displayed all I have to do is click it and here it goes two four six eight ten twelve fourteen 16. So, I guess we can watch the ALU for a little bit. And all it's doing is just adding two different numbers, busting it back down here to data inputs of memory, and then it's saving to this slot over here in memory. So it's just passing through and always reading. And yeah, so that's about it. So, hey guys. Um, <clears throat> you guys might call me a nub for this, but this is a... Well, I've never built a combinational lock in Minecraft and I've never built one that was case sensitive so let's go ahead and start with the reset now the password is 5736 designated right there and that's the order it should be inputted in so 5736 should hopefully work if I didn't do it too fast and it did There's, that's good now we could try to input those in a random number so 7 six five three and as you can see it didn't work <coughs> um we can try six seven three five six seven three five once again doesn't work so it's order sensitive um you can try spamming all the inputs like that doesn't work you know oh you might get lucky every now and then almost get it to turn on like that but then it'll flash off but um what this is is obviously it's a button thing to a binary decoder or en encoder I guess then that 
decodes to your password that you want. So we have five, seven, three, six. Then that comes into an RSNOR latch, which goes up here into another RSNOR latch, and it, yeah, there's a lot of memory saving and everything. And then this decoder is like, okay, if this is bad, then we'll send it here and reset everything. So that's how it works. And hopefully you guys enjoy this vid. And um, ho hopefully I gained a couple subscribers with this. Um, I recently hit like 66 now. And I'm hoping for 70 soonish, and then I'm probably I don't know I think I know what I'm gonna do for my hundred subscriber special, but that's a secret for now. Um, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.